Welcome students to MBBS online lecture. Today we are going to solve GIT module as well as endocrinology module test. There is a complete solution. There are a total of 150 questions in this file. So let's get started. Starting with the GIT module, subject is the anatomy. Question number one is about the histological section taken from a part of a GIT where transitional from transition from non keratinized stratified squamous with submucosal glands to simple columnar epithelium with mucosal glands. Which part of GIT is under microscope? So there are options from 1A to E, pectinate line, junction between sigmoid colon and rectum, junction between ileum and cecum, junction between rectum and upper half of the canal, or junction between esophagus and cardiac of the stomach. So when we look at under the microscope and when we identify that the, the the histological section that is being examined contains submucosal glands. So submucosal glands within the GIT contain within two major organs, which are two major parts, which are esophagus and the second one is the duodenum, which contains submucosal mucus glands. So stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium is present in the esophagus, while the junction between, while the transition to the simple columnar is indicating that it could be the stomach. So junction between the esophagus and the cardiac of the stomach is the right answer. Moving toward question two, number two, a middle-aged woman visited a GI gastroenterologist with the complaint of chest change in bowel habits and bleeding with his stool. He had history of lack of fiber diet in the past on her erectile examination biopsy he was diagnosed as a case of adenocarcinoma of the colon. Which of the following glands are present in the large intestine? Brunner's gland, compound SNR glands, sim simple branch tubular glands, straight tubular glands or crypts, or crypts of, crypts of liver cone with villi. So when we examine the section of the large intestine, it contains straight tubular, simple tubular glands. Scripts or lubricon are the uh, feature of the small intestine. Second one, third one is the 40 year old male visited at a physician's clinic with the complaint of pain in epigastric region radiating to the back. On examination, tenderness and the sign of peritonitis were observed. CT scan reveals growth in pancreas involving large pancreatic duct. Which of the following epithelium lines the large pancreatic duct? Simple columnar, simple cuboidal, Stratified cuboidal or stratified columnar epithelium, squamous epithelium. So it's asking about the large pancreatic duct. So whenever you see uh, any glandular structure, its histology, majority of the large, large ductal system is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium, but the large ducts are lined by the stratified cuboidal epithelium. So correct answer is C. A histologist examining a section obtained from an endoscopic biopsy of an anemic patient with a dyspnea with dyspepsia and retroesternal burning. Observed areas where epithelium is discontinuous with the inflammatory infiltrates. Hypersecretion of which of the cell result in gastric ulcer? Mucus neck cell, parietal cell, chief cell, and enteroendocrine cells. So HCL is secreted by parietal cells that are part of the gastric glands and present in the fundus and the body. So correct option would be the B. Moving toward question number five, a 50 year old female with a complaint of fever pain in her upper quadrant with a vaginal, oh sorry, vague symptoms of indigestion. After clinical workup, patient was diagnosed as a case of gallbladder carcinoma and planned for surgical resection. What is the normal epithelium of gallbladder? Normal epithelium of gallbladder or any part of the GIT except the anal canal as well as the esophagus is lined by simple columnar epithelium and there are microvilli which helps in absorption of certain nutrients. The histological hallmark of the small intestine is a folded arrangement of mucosa and submucosa which is assigned as crypt formation, pyrus patches like a circularis or tinea coli or stratification of epithelium. Obviously, the mucosal folds within the small intestine are the features of the lab. 
are features of the small mucosal folding which are called as lica circularis. Two year old neonate develops persistent bilious bilious vomiting. Laparotomy performed after initial workup reveals that the cecum is fixed to the right upper abdomen, abdo, abdominal quadrant. Which of the following embryological process most likely failed in this patient? Fusion of the dorsal and ventral pancreatic duct, obliteration of omphalo mesenteric duct, hind gut descent along the inferior mesenteric artery, or mid gut rotation around superior mesenteric artery, migration of neural crest cell in the gut. Since the cecum, we need to see that the cecum is a part of the mid, mid gut. So when the cecum is not fixed in its initial, uh, its original position, normal position, which is a right iliac fossa, and it is present in the left, uh, right upper quadrant of the abdomen. So there would be male rotation bit of the mid gut that result in the abnormal position of the cecum. Moving to our question number eight, a four year old boy has not defecated and since coming home from the hospital. Even through feeding, he has been normal with any excessive vomiting. Rectal examination reveals a normal anus, anal canal and rectum. However, a large fecal mass is found in the colon and a large release of flatus feces follows the rectal examination suspected of a ganglionic colon or megacolon due to absence of parasympathetic ganglia. Which of the following is the source of parasympathetic ganglia? Whatever the ganglia, ganglias are the collection of nerve cell bodies, cell bodies which are outside the central nervous system. So parasympathetic ganglia as well as sympathetic ganglia are derived from neural crest cells. Moving to our question number nine, a four year old month, a four month old boy brought a pediatric surgeon with a complaint of swelling at the umbilicus above the, about the size of tennis ball. After thorough examination as omphalocele is diagnosed as omphalocele caused by failure of bowel, bowel to return from physiological herniation. Normally bowel returns by which weak to the body cavity. So what happens in omphalocele this is a ventral wall defect when where the lateral folds of the embryo it does not fuse in the midline that causes the abdominal viscera to protrude from ventral abdominal wall. So in, in omphalocele, this is gastrochasis and in om, omphalocele, this is also congenital herniation. But this is due to the physiological herniation. In week 6, the abdominal cavity is not well developed. So the abdomen, the rapidly proliferate, proliferating small intestine coils, basically they herniate into the umbilical cord. So this is called physiological herniation and this normally returns back into the abdominal cavity during week 10. So six, week 6 to 10 would be the ideal uh, time for the, uh, for the normal, for the physiological herniation and its return back. 28 year old boy is brought to the pediatrician because of the projectile vomiting after feeding until this time the baby has no problem on feeding. On examination a small knot is palpated at the right costal margin due to the over thickness of pylorus, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Which of the structure is no abnormally formed in this condition? So hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is uh, basically the circular muscle which form the pylorus or pylorus pyloric sphincters. So these are abnormally excited. So when they are contracted they causes the pyloric canal to become very narrow does not allowing any food to pass through it so no stomach emptying occur so in it is causing about the, which of the following a structure that is de developed abnormally so circular muscles which are part of the git wall are dr derived from visceral mesoderm so these are the main culprits for the pyloric stenosis so uh, so moving to our next a newborn baby present in the emergency with a swelling in the stomach area, early vomiting of a green color and vomiting continuously, even without feeding. Radiography recalls reveals typical double bubble sign of duodenal atresia, failure of which of the process result in such condition. Apoptosis, migration, proliferation, recanalization, or epithelization. 
this is going to be the case of re canalization because in re canalization duodenal atresia is caused by re, re failure of re canalization of duodenal lumen so here is a as you can see this is the part of developing git or we say developing foregut this is the dilation of the stomach this is the duodenum c shaped duodenum you can see now these are the ventral and dors dorsal pancreatic duct ventral pancreatic duct arising at this point is the hepatic butt with along with its gall bladder as well as right and left hepatic ducts now it is uh, the in question we have we can clearly see that the early vomiting of a green bile this means that the bile is being excreted or bile is being thrown into the duodenum that causes the vomiting to be contained within uh, with bile along with the bile so this is the case of recanalization moving to our question number 12 a 28 year old patient brought in emergency with a sudden pain in the left quadrant of abdomen with history of constipation associated with abdominal distension and vomiting contrast radiography reveals intestinal obstruction emergency laparotomy was performed abnormal rotation of intestinal loop left sided colon was found in, in leading to volvulus and obstruction which of the following part normally returns in last jejunum ascending colon descending colon or transverse colon or cecum so first one to enter into the uh, abdominal cavity after physiological herniation is the jejunum while the last one which enters the abdominal cavity is the cecum so cecum is going to be correct answer question number 13 female with a known history of uh, peptic ulcer disease with helicobacter pylori positive develops severe pain in the abdomen laparotomy perforation of posterior wall of the duodenum was found which of the following artery get ruptured in this case splenic artery superior pancreatic or duodenal artery inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery or gastro duodenal artery or left gastric artery so this is the ulceration of the posterior wall of the duodenum we can clearly see two we can uh, rule out other other options and uh, keep in mind uh, our option b as well as option d because gastro duodenal artery is a artery that is coursing posterior to the du uh, posterior to the first part and the second part of the duodenum so gastro duodenal artery basically gives certain branches one of the branch of the gastro duodenal artery is the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery that also supplies the first and second part of the duodenum when we see the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery is also divided into two anterior and the posterior branch if the question also contains or, or the option also contains the superior posterior superior pancreatic or duodenal artery that would be the correct answer specific answer but the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery is not the specific answer so we are going to choose the gastro duodenal artery now i have a picture as you can see this is the celiac trunk arising from the aorta this is the part of duodenum continuation of the pylorus of stomach as you can see this is the gastro duodenal artery coursing posterior to the first part of the duodenum it gives certain branches anterior and the posterior branches which is called as superior anterior anterior superior pancreatic or duodenal artery or vice versa moving to our next male patient of 50 year develops severe sciatica when doctor investigated him he found stage 4 rectal carcinoma invading neighboring structures which of the following fascia prevents invasion of rectal cancer in the sacral plexus wilder's fascia dino villiers fascia bucks fascia scarpus fascia deep fascia it's going to be the dino villiers fascia dino villiers fascia is also called recto vesical septum so recto vesical septum septum is formed as well as dino uh, villiers fascia is formed from the extension of the peritoneal cavity or oh, sorry peritoneal peri para, uh, visceral peritoneum with that forms pouch which is also called the recto vesical pouch so recto vesical pouch inferiorly obliterates in front of the rectum as well as the bladder 
so this forms the fascia we call it denovillar fascia between the rectum and the bladder now moving to our question number 15 diabetic patient since 25 year old uh, year develops a carcinoma tumor over the anterior abdominal wall above the umbilicus which may spread to distant sites by which lymph nodes superficial inguinal deep inguinal axillary nodes parasternal nodes or mediastinal nodes so keep in mind when uh, the level of umbilicus over the anterior abdominal wall is a, a very important point important mark above the umbilicus the lymph will drain into the axillary nodes and below the umbilicus it will drain into the superficial inguinal nodes in this case it is asking about the above the umbilicus so we'll choose option c axillary nodes a male patient develops a heaviness of scrotum with a sensation of bag of worms. Doctors, after physical examination, diagnose as a case of left sided varicocele. Which of the following important structures blocked in this case? Pampaniform plexus, left testicular vein, right testicular vein, left renal vein, or right renal vein. So, bag of worm is suggesting that the, in the scrotum is suggesting that these are pampiniform plexus which are which became dilated with this is called varicocele cell since the case is on only on the left side so left side will be the left renal vein because if you look at the drainage of the right and the left uh, uh, testicles so left gonad or the left testis develop uh, give arise to the left gonadal vein so left testicular vein is draining into the as you can see this is posteriorly black one is the kidney this is the left renal vein so the left testicular vein is draining into the left renal vein so when we block the left renal vein it will cause the blockage in the drainage of the left testicular vein also which causes fluid to be to bake into the pampiniform plexus of the left side causing varicocele. Male patient with a surgery of anal carcinoma develops permanent fecal incontinence which of the following important structure is damaged during surgery. So fecal incontinence is caused by the damage to the anorectal ring. So anorectal ring is a major structure which is causing the which is causing continence of the feces in the rectum. It is formed from the superficial uh, external external anal node, internal sorry external anal sphincter, internal anal sphincter as well as the fibers of the puborectalis. So these forms and converge converge to form an anorectal ring that can be palpated on digital ex rectal examination. If we, any damage to the anorectal ring occurs the fecal continence incontinence occurs a young patient young female with a full term pregnancy visited the obstetrician with the complaint of swelling on the ankles and feet on examination varicose veins were observed due to pressure of uterus on the inferior vena cava which of the following structures lying posterior to the inferior vena cava The structure which is lying inferior to the vena cava, inferior to or the posterior to the inferior vena cava are uh, between these options is the right suprarenal gland. If you look at the right suprarenal gland, you can see this is the right suprarenal gland which is lying posteriorly around its little part is posterior to the inferior vena cava. A 42-year-old woman's radiograph revealed the perforation to the posterior wall of the stomach and gastric content is spilled into the lesser sac. The surgeon gets access to the gastrosplenic ligament, which of the following vessel is most likely to be injured. Splenic artery, gastrointestinal artery, left gastric artery, right gastric artery, or left gastroepiploic artery. So the surgeon has damaged the gastrosplenic ligament. So we need to see that the, what are the arteries or the what are the arteries that are arising from the splenic artery or what are the branches of the branches arising from the splenic artery that is supplying the stomach 
so uh, between or in these options the left gastroepiploic artery is the artery that is supplying to the greater uh, curvature of the stomach and it is arising or it is a branch of splenic artery so this is going to be the correct answer because the gastrosplenic ligament is between the greater curvature of the stomach and the spleen so the and this is a fold of peritoneum and the peritoneum contain and this contains blood vessels as well as uh, blood vessels as well as lymphatics moving to our question number 20 a young patient developed the severe abdominal pain surgeon on laparotomy diagnosed internal herniation which may occur due to internal herniation could be caused by epiploic foramen uh, which is the which forms the basically form uh, which is formed from the right free edge of the lesser omentum so the midgut or the we say in, intestinal loops can herniate into the epiploic foramen a young patient was uh, brought to the emergency after sustaining a fall from motorbike in a semi conscious state and damage in the left side of the abdomen after initial resuscitation imaging was performed which showed a fractured ninth rib and hyper echoic shadow within peritoneum suggestive of hemorrhage which is structure is related to fracture rib responsible for bleeding pancreas duodenum gastrosplenic ligament or gastroduodenal artery or the spleen or stomach so structure that is on the left side is the spleen because it's causing the damage to the left side of the abdomen has occurred and it causes lot of hemorrhage within the peritoneal cavity which is indicating that the spleen is damaged because the fracture of the ninth rib because the spleen lies in on internally or in contact with the ribs 9 and 10 so when the fracture of ribs 9th or 10th occurs damage to the spleen will be the consequence a middle aged diabetic male patient oh, came to the opd with a complaint of epigastric pain radiating to the back loss of appetite indigestion and weight loss itchy and yellowish discoloration of skin with a dark colored urine after th- thorough examination and imaging patient was diagnosed as a case of adenocarcinoma of head of the pancreas which is structure is related posterior to the lateral head of the pancreas contributing to the patient symptoms superior mesenteric artery common bile duct inferior vena cava cystic duct or the gastrointestinal artery based on the signs and symptoms of the patient we can see that this patient has a jaundice due to the yellowish discoloration of the skin also the weight loss as well as the dark colored urine which is indicative of highly high high bilirubin within urine so bilirubin as well as other uh, bilirubin is not being excreted through the git so this is the indicative of the blockage in the common bile duct and remember that the head injury or the injury or the carcinoma of head of the pancreas because posterior immediately posterior to the head of the pancreas is the common bile duct so whenever the carcinoma of a head of the pancreas occurs the common bile duct will be blocked that causes this jaundice moving toward other questions so a 50 year old male this question is not uh, clear so we'll skip and move toward question number 24 a 60 year old non patient of uh, alcoholic liver disease with portal hypertension underwent colorectal surgery corrective surgery during the procedure surgeon accidentally damaged the dilated paraumbilical veins which needs to be repaired for collateral flow which ligament was severed by the surgeon gastrosplenic ligament of triads ligament teres hepatis falciform ligament or median umbilical ligament so the paraumbilical uh, Uh, paraumbilical veins are the tributaries of the hepatic portal vein and they travel within the falciform ligament so when the falciform ligament is damaged it will lead to the hemorrhage now a 30 year old male 
brought to the emergency with a complaint of severe pain and tenderness in the right iliac fossa, low grade fever and vomiting on examination positive ha uh, patient has positive rebound tenderness and guarding reflex and thigh reflex towards the trunk suggestive of appendicitis which is a what is the exact location did the doctor palpate to elicit the pain So the exact location or the base of the pancreas is also called the McBurney's point. It is located uh, approximately two third from umbilicus to anterior superior iliac spine, or we can say from anterior uh, approximately one third from anterior superior iliac spine to umbilicus. So option B is correct here. During gastrocolostomy, a surgeon is ligating all arteries that send branches to the stomach. Which, is the, which of the following artery may be spared? Splenic, inferior pancreatic, duodenal artery, left gastroepiplic artery, proper hepatic artery, or right gastroepiplic artery. If you look at the blood supply of the stomach, the stomach is not supplied by the inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery, so there will be no need to clamp this artery because this is a branch of the superior mesenteric artery and all of the branches branches of the all other options are the branches of the celiac trunk which supply directly or indirectly to the stomach during removal of gangrene's part of the large intestine most of the inferior mesenteric artery was removed collateral blood flow between which of the following maintains the blood supply remaining gut ileocolic right colic left and middle colic left colic and sigmoidal right and middle colic sigmoidal and superior rectal if we see at the location uh, at the location where the collateral blood flow is being blocked this is the part of inferior mesentic artery inferior mesentic artery is blocked in this case the left colic or the left colon will as left descending colon will not be supplied by the inferior mesentic artery because this is a derivative of hindgut which is supplied by inferior mesentic artery so anastomosis between the middle colic middle colic arising from the superior mesentic artery so this in this case it will not be blocked so middle colic will supply to the left colic that will supply other parts of the GID inferior to this so this is going to be the left colic and the middle colic you can see here so this is ascending colon, this is the transverse colon. We know that the midgut is around the right two-third of the transverse colon up to this point. This is called the midgut uh, mid and it is supplied by superior mesenteric artery. As you can see here, this is the middle colic artery and anastomosis between the middle colic and the left colic artery supply collateral blood flow towards the descending colon and sigmoid colon in case of inferior pancreatic artery blockage or, or say inferior mesentic artery blockage. So lymphatic drainage of the terminal portion of the GIT may flow initially into either the superficial or the para-rectal node, para -rectal nodes depending upon whether the lymph is formed above or below which of the following structure. Anorectal junction, a muscular sling of the puberectalis muscle, pectinate line, white line, or cutaneous line. So, pectinate line indicates the upper half and the, uh, divides the upper half of the anal canal and the lower half of the anal canal. Lower half is developing from the colloquial or the anorectal uh, or the urogenital sinus not the urogenital sinus from the cloaca, lower half is developed from the cloaca and the upper half is developed from the for, um, hindgut. So hindgut is supplied by the superior mesentic artery and it drain and the lymph will be the sorry hindgut is supplied by the inferior mesentic artery and lymph drainage will also be in the inferior mesentic nodes while the lower half will be supplied by the inferior rectal vein or inferior rectal artery and lymph will be the in the superficial inguinal nodes. A 20 year old man complains of pain in abdomen which is initially at peri-umbilical region then shifted to the right iliac fossa also has nausea vomiting. Diagnosis of appendicitis was confirmed during surgery appendix is not visible. What structures surgeon trace to locate the appendix?
सो ऑप्शन बी इज करेक्ट बिकॉज द ट्रेस टू ट्रेस ट्रेस द तीनो कोला ऑन द सीका इंडिकेट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द अपेंडिक्स बिकॉज द टीनो कोला आर द लॉन्जीट्यूडल बैंड प्रेजेंट ऑन द वॉल्स ऑफ द लार्ज इंटेस्टिन दीज आर एबसेंट इन द रेक्टम एंड अपेंडिक्स सो द कन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द तीनो कोला ओवर सीकम इफ यू ट्रेस फ्रॉम द सीकम टूवर्ड्स द टूवर्ड्स द अपेंडिक्स और वेन द सी वेन द टीनो कोला विल एंड एंड टर्मिनेट इट इंडिकेट दैट द बेस ऑफ द अपेंडिक्स हैज बीन रीच्ड आफ्टर एन एमरजेंसी अपेंडसेक्टमी अ पेशेंट कंप्लेन ऑफ हैविंग पैरास्थीजिया ऑफ द थिन स्किन एट द व्यूबिक रीजन द मोस्ट लाइकली नर्व दैट हैज बीन इंजर्ड ड्यूरिंग द ऑपरेशन इज इट्स गोइंग टू बी इलियो हाइपोगेस्ट्रिक नर्व विच ऑल्सो दिस इज नॉट दिस इज इलियो हाइपोगेस्ट्रिक बट द मोस्ट स्पेसिफिक वुड बी द इलियो इंग्वाइनल नर्व विच इज ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द एल वन स्पाइनल लेवल सिक्सटी टू ओल्ड मैन हैज सीवियर पोटल हाइपर टेंशन विच पोस्टोकेवल एनाशंट कैन बी क्रिएटेड इन दिस पेशेंट टू हेल्प डिक्रीज दिज ब्लड प्रेशर लेफ्ट गैस्ट्रिक वैन टू स्प्रिंग वैन राइट गैस्ट्रिक वैन टू लेफ्ट गैस्ट्रिक वैन राइट रीनल वैन टू राइट कॉनेडल वैन स्प्रिंग वैन टू लेफ्ट रीनल वैन स्प्रिंग वैन टू राइट रीनल वैन सो वी नीड टू इस्टेब्लिश अस्ट पोटोस्केवल एनास्टमोसिस विच इज बिटवीन द पोटल सिस्टम and the systemic circulation so we need to rule out the arteries and uh, uh, focus on the arteries which are from the hepatic portal vein or the tributaries of the hepatic portal vein and tributaries of the systemic circulation and the most specific and the su- successive portocaval shunt can be created by splenic vein to join splenic vein with the left left renal vein because the left renal vein is all a bigger vein that drains the left kidney as well as other structures so splenic vein into the left renal vein is a successful portocaval shunt that can be created to decrease the blood pressure a 50 year old man has admitted to the hospital with severe abdominal pain gastroscopy and ct scan revealed perforating ulcer in the posterior wall of the stomach where would the peritonitis most likely develop initially right subhepatic space hepatorenal of morrison a mental bursa right subphrenic space or greater sac immediate immediately posterior to the stomach is the location of the mental bursa or the lesser sac so peritone in the post at the ulcer is perforating the posterior wall of the stomach so it will most commonly infect or the we say irritate the peritoneum behind it which is omental bursa look at the question number 34 a case of chronic liver disease ka, uh, came to emergency with pressure symptoms of fluid inside the peritoneal cavity which of the following side is most dependent in spine position recto vesical pouch recto ut- यूट्रोविजाइकल पाउच रेक्टो यूट्रेन पाउच और हेपाटोरिनल पाउच इन लेसर सेक सो देर आर टू मेन पाउचेज विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट वेयर द पेरिटोनियल फ्लूड कैन बी एक्यूमुलेटेड दीज आर द हेपाटोरिनल पाउच विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड द सब हेपेटिक पाउच और सुपरारीनल पाउच और द पाउच ऑफ मॉरिसंस मॉरिसंस पाउच एंड वन इज द रेक्टो यूट्राइन पाउच विच इज present in the females and the recto vesical pouch which is in the male so in standing position in standing when the person is standing so the most deepest position or the most deepest deepest point of the peritoneal cavity will be the recto uterine pouch or recto vesical pouch when a person is supine so the most likely the fluid will accumulate in the pouch of morrison which is also called the hepatorenal pouch option d is correct here so 35 a 50 year old man has developed aortic aneurysm due to atherosclerosis at which level aortic aneurysm commonly occurs so the below the aortic aneurysm in the abdominal abdominal region occurs most commonly in at the origin below the origin of renal artery 36 
a 50 year old man visited to the GIT gastroenterologist with the complaint of progressive weight loss pain in lower abdominal area and change in bowel habits blood in stool he was diagnosed as a case of colorectal cancer cancer of the large bowel early cure of the cancer can be anticipated by removing of each of the following structures lymphatic mantle plexus portal circulation surrounding structure and lesnar plexus so most commonly the first site where the uh, tumor can be spread or the cancer can be spread metastasized is, is the lymphatics a general surgeon while performing rectal sur surgery asking his assistant trainee to the structure separating the rectum from prostate and urethra he is asking about which of the following structures so this question we have discussed previously uh, the same uh, concept that the between the rectum and the bladder and the pr prostate in the males is separated by the rectovesical septum which is derived from the endopelvic fascia as well as the continuation of the rectovesical pouch which is a pouch of peritoneum so a physician decided to do a cesarean section on 25 year old pregnant woman a transverse suprapubic incision is made is chosen for that purpose which of the following abdominal area will be will not be encountered during this incision anterior rectus sheath posterior rectus sheath rectus abdominal muscle skin of the subcutaneous tissue transversalis fascia extra peritoneal fat and peritoneum so when an incision in the anterior abdominal wall above the sub, above the pubis pubic bone below umbilicus and above the pubic bone does not encounter posterior rectus sheath because if we look at the rectus sheath formed rectus sheath shows three variation at three different points one is the above the costal margin which posterior will be above the costal margin posterior will be the thoracic cage and anterior will be the only the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle below the second variation is below costal margin and between umbilicus and the costal margin in this condition the you can see in this picture that posterior rectus sheath is present which is formed by the internal of uh, transverse abdominis and internal oblique and anterior rectus sheath is formed by the external or we say external oblique muscle but when as we progress downward from umbilicus this is level of umbilicus as you can see here the, the, this is a posterior rectus sheath and this is anterior rectus sheath now below umbilicus the and posterior rectus sheath common uh, turns anteriorly and merges with the anterior rectus sheath so there will be no posterior rectus sheath below the level of umbilicus so the, when a incision will be made at so below the level of umbilicus or we say supra pubic this is the pubic bone if incision is made here no posterior rectus sheath will be present in at this stage moving to our question number 39 a 20 year old boy with a high grade fever and digestion was brought to the general physician splenomegaly was noticed on abdominal examination and ultrasound reveals portal hypertension portal hypertension or the portal vein is formed behind the neck of pancreas by union of which of the following means so remember that the por portal vein is formed by the superior mesentic artery merging with the splenic vein and this occurs behind the neck of pancreas so option b will be correct moving toward question number 40 this is the last question in the git of the anatomy section a 35 year old man visited the nephrol nephrologist clinical with clinic with the complaint of pain in the lumbar region pain was also aggravated during extension of the thigh on examination intra abdominal inflammation affecting the iliosos muscle was found which of the following nerve from the lumbar plexus supply the iliosos muscle so iliosos muscle is supplied from the l2 to l4 which is femoral nerve so moving toward the subject physiology of the git module so question number 43 a 54 year old woman eats a healthy meal approximately 20 minutes later the woman feels to urge to defecate which of the following reflexes result in the urge to defecate when the stomach is straight 
ड्यूनोकॉलिक एंट्रोगोक गैस्ट्रिक गैस्ट्रोकॉलिक एंटेरो इंटेस्टिनल इंटेस्टिनो इंटेस्टिनल रेक्टोस्फेंटेरिक सो गैस्ट्रोकॉलिक इज अ शॉर्ट रिफ्लेक्स दैट इज कॉजिंग अराइजिंग फ्रॉम द डिस्टेंशन ऑफ द गैस्ट्रियम और द स्टमक एंड थ्रू द माइंटेरिक फ्लेक्सेस और कॉजिंग द रिलेक्सेशन ऑफ द एक्सटर्नल एनलिस्फिंगटर और द इंक्रीज इन द पेस्टाल ऑफ द रेक्टम दैट इज कॉजिंग द वोमेन टू अर्ज अर्ज फॉर डिफिकेट डिफिकेशन सो हेयर गैस्ट्रोकॉलिक विल बी द करेक्ट एंसर बाइंडिंग ऑफ कोबोलामिन टू इंटरसेक फैक्टर अकर्स इन विच आर द फॉलोइंग ऑर्गन सो एज यू नो दैट द इंटरसेक फैक्टर इज रिलीज फ्रॉम द पेराइटल सेल्स अलॉन्ग विद एच सी एल इन द गैस्ट्रिक ग्लैंड ऑफ द स्टमक एंड इट इज पोलीपेप्टाइड विच इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशंसी ऑफ द इंटरसेक फैक्टर लीडिंग टू द मेगा पर्नीशियस एनीमिया विच इज अ काइंड ऑफ मेगालोब्लास्टिक एनीमिया बाइंडिंग ऑफ द कोबोलामिन अकर्स नॉर्मली इन द ड्यूटिनम एंड द एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ द बोथ द कॉम्प्लेक्स अकर्स इन द एलियम फोर्टी फाइव a 30 year old male in the brought to the emergency with a severe pain in the abdomen and vomiting he is sweating and has low blood pressure ultrasound abdomen shows acute pancreatitis so pancreas secrete proteolytic enzyme in active form gallstones are the major important cause of this condition elevation of the serum amylase in the diagnostic criteria or condition is mild and has very low mortality rate ileum secrete proteolytic enzyme so this is the case of pancreatitis other options does not uh, has any relevance to the pancreatitis by while the option b and the c looks somewhat uh, correct but the most specific would be the gallstones are the major most important cause of the condition because elevation of the serum amylase is not a diagnostic criteria serum amylase is also found in the parotid glands which can also be increased alpha amylase so serum lipase which is also from released from the pen or released in the pancreatic juice is is the most specific marker of the acute pancreatitis question number 46 a 16 year old boy is complaining of intermittent diarrhea since 11 months with sticky light color feces abdominal bloating and bleeding gums it occurs due to t cell mediated bowel damage occurs due to gliadin mediated t cell sensitization or loss of absorptive area of fat absorption bleeding gums are due to vitamin k deficiency due to gastroparesis so this case is uh, going to be the case of celiac disease which occurs due to gliadin mediated t cell sensitization which in which the gliadin part of the wheat part of the protein present in the wheat is attacked by the t cell and causing leading to damage to in the intestine which causes villi, villi of the intestine to blunt and flatten leading to impaired absorption in the fats that's why the sticky light color Uh, feces are observed due to fat due to steatorrhea abdominal bloating is also due to the gliadin mediated t cell sensitization sensitization which is ca- causing damage to the git wall most commonly in the duodenum so this option will be the correct this is a case of celiac disease a 75 year old woman men with a chronic alcoholic liver disease now developing mental sy- symptoms like confusion disorientation this is due to loss of function of oxygenated cells hepatocytes cuffer cells gut flora or renal cells since this is a chronic alcoholic liver disease in liver disease most hepatocytes forms the liver that's why and are mainly invo- involved in the detoxification and many of the metabolic processes so when these are damaged functions will be lost many functions will be impaired question number 48 the following is an example of git reflect that uh, involves transmission of signal from the gut to spinal cord and then back to gut enterogastric gastrocolic defecation colony colo colonoileal or vagovagal 
Now the enterogastric as well as gastrocolic along with colonoileal are the short reflexes and these occur within the myenteric plexus and does not involve any sympathetic chain or ganglia or the spinal cord. While the defecation reflex and the vagovagal reflex are long reflexes which involve the brainstem and the spinal cord. Specifically, this is asking about the spinal cord, so we will not choose the vagovagal reflex because vagus nucleus is within the medulla and which is part of brainstem. So, vagovagal reflex is also arising, this is arising or reflex reflex involving the brainstem while the defecation reflex involves the mainly the sacral part of the spinal cord. So option C will be correct here. Swallowing is a, swallowing is a complex process that involves signaling between pharynx and swallowing center in the brainstem which of the following is a voluntary event during the act of swallowing. Transmission of action potential from the pharyngeal region to the brainstem, movement of the tongue against the palate, relaxation of upper esophageal sphincter, esophageal peristalsis or closure of the glottis. If we see the stages of the glutination, deglutination or we say swallowing, these are broken down into three, which are first one is going to be the voluntary, second one pharyngeal and third one is the esophageal. Both the esophageal and the pharyngeal are the involuntary stages of the while the is while the voluntary stage involves the pushing or the movement of the tongue that causing food bolus to push backward into the throat so movement of tongue against the palate is the voluntary stage since the tongue is in our voluntary control the following statement that best describes the peristalsis of the small intestine is coordinated by extensive in autonomic nervous system, is mainly responsible for mixing of the food with the GIT secretion, involves relaxation of smooth muscle simultaneously throughout the small intestine, involves contraction of the muscle, smooth muscle behind the behind and in front of the food bolus, involves contraction of the smooth muscle behind the food and relaxation of smooth muscle in front of the bolus. This is basic question from which is asking about the peristalsis. Peristalsis occurs when the contraction of the smooth muscle below, posterior to the foot bolus and relaxation anterior to the foot bolus causing movement of food within the GIT lumen. Moving towards question number 51, the bile plays an important role in both digestion and absorption of the lipids and lipid soluble vitamins. Which of the following new constituent or component of the bile is necessary for this purpose? Bile pigments, bile salts and acids, bile cholesterol, phospholipids and bicarbonates. Bile salts and bile acids are mainly involved in the formation of muscles and emulsification process of the fats that lead to its digestion as well as absorption. A fatty female of 40 years complains of pain at right side of the abdomen. She has dyspepsia and often vomiting. On ultrasound abdomen, gall stones are seen. So gallstones are more common in male than female. Gallstones are formed when bile movement is fast. Gallstones are formed by coagulation of mucus. Decreased lecithin to cholesterol ratio causes gallstone. Or gallstones are formed when serum cholesterol level decreases. So most important causes of the gall for gallstone to form are the increased cholesterol as well as decreased bile salts or any trauma to the or any inflammation of the duct of the bile uh, or the gallbladder. So in this case here, here you can see this decreased lecithin to cholesterol ratio. It means that the cholesterol has been increased. So when the cholesterol will increase it causes gallstone. So this is going to be the correct answer. A young lady complains of burning and pain in the epigastrium. Pain is aggravated by taking spicy food. So stomach wall has no protection against CL. HCL gastric juice has an acidic pH of 5 to 6. In case gastric acidity may cause peptic ulcer, aspirin and alcohol decrease gastric acidity. Decreased gastric acidity causes GERD. Most of the students will be confused there between the option A and option C. Option A states that the stomach wall has no protection against HCL. This is incorrect because the stomach wall is protected by a thick layer of mucus secreted by mucus cells. So 
option C will be correct here because increase in the gastric acidity may cause peptic ulcer. The defecation is a process of expulsion of uh, fecal matter from rectum through anus into the exter uh, external environment. Which of the following change normally occurs during this process? Intra-abdominal pressure is lower than when at rest. Segmentation contractions predominate. External anal sphincter is contracted. Internal anal sphincter is relaxed. Rectal smooth muscle is relaxed. Whenever the defecation reflex is there, the internal in anal sphincter is relaxed, that causing the person to urge for the defecation. While external anal sphincter is in voluntary control, that's why. During the gastric phase, secretion of SCL and pepsinogen is stimulated mainly by the vagal stimulation, gastrin, secretin, cholecystokinin, and uh, action of bile. The major factor that is causing the secretion of HCL from the parietal cells during the gastric phase is the vagal stimulation because acetyl release acetylcholine release from parasympathetic fibers at at the in the stomach mucosa this causes the have three effects or acetylcholine has effects on three cells G cells H cells histamine cells or we say enterochromaffin cells which release histamine and by histamine bind to H2 receptor leading to increased gastric acid secretion. So while the gastrin only binds to the G cells or the CCK2 receptors leading to the increased secretion of HCL. So vagal stimulation particularly dominates the secretion of HCL. Which of the following intestinal movement pushes the fecal matter all the way to rectum and may stimulate defecation reflex, peristalsis, segmentation, peristaltic rush, mass movement, and hostration? Since it's talking about the fecal matter and it states that it is occurring in the rectum, when we look at the peristalsis of the rectum, these are specialized peristalsis and we call it the mass movement while the hostration are the segmentation movements or this basically chops down the feces and mixes it with the water while peristalsis is a general common term for the movement of the GIT segmentation occurs in the in small intestine primary secretion of the saliva differ from secondary secretion in that occurs in the ducts of salivary gland has more potassium than the plasma has more so sodium chloride than the plasma. It is similar in composition to the plasma has less glucose than plasma. Whenever the primary secretion from the acinus of the salivary glands occurs, it is mostly isotonic to the plasma. So that's why it is similar in composition to plasma. And when the primary secretion passes through a duct system, it causes the absorption and secretion of certain substances leading to hypotonic salivary secretion which, which is secondary secretion so in this case d is the correct answer 50 year old female lady has mid gastric pain that subsides on eating food and becomes worse on empty stomach she might be suffering from solinger allenson syndrome peptic disease pancreatitis cholecystitis leprosy so this is a case of a duodenal ulcer or we said duodenal ulcer and duodenal ulcer is called, uh, is a part of or type of peptic ulcer so peptic ulcer will be the correct answer moving toward the biochemistry section regarding gastric juice all our statements are correct except ph of gastric juice ranges between 1 and 2 it is grow clear pale colored fluid containing good amount of water contains one to three solids person solid hclx is a antimicrobial agent basal cells are the source of gastric hcl secretion we all know that the hcl is secreted by parietal cells so option e is incorrect and in this case option e is correct Which of the following is a corrective for alkaline phosphatase? It is a specific marker for cholestasis. 
concomitant rights increase in of gamma glutamyl transferase in more specific or cholestasis is not raised in alcoholic hepatitis is very sensitive to for any damage to the biliary system have equal ranges in children and adults alkaline phosphatase is not a specific marker for the single alkaline phosphatase or alone alkaline phosphatase is not a specific marker for the cholestasis because the alkaline phosphatase is also in we also increase in the bond disorders where or, or in the growing children so alkaline phosphatase along with the ggt gamma glutamyl transferase is a specific marker for the cholestasis presence of fats in the duodenum will cause secretion of gastrin secretin cholecystokinin or vasoactive intestinal peptide or all of the above so fats stimulate the secretion of cholecystokinin within the duodenum which causes the secretion of uh, enzymes within the pancreatic secretion so regarding digestion and absorption of carbohydrates which of the following is not true digestion of carbohydrates starts in mouth there is no gastric enzyme for the digestion of carbohydrates digestion of carbohydrates in intestine diminish from above downwards fructose is absorbed more rapidly than the glucose glucose and galactose pentoses are absorbed at the slowest rate from in small intestine so in this case the option d is incorrect because the absorption of this glucose or the rate of absorption if we compare different iso i uh, different forms of the glu- uh, or monosaccharides the galactose is absorbed more rapidly than all the monosaccharides then comes the glucose and then comes the fructose and in last pentoses are mostly slowly more slowly absorbed which type of transport mechanism does the glucose utilize for the git absorption passive facilitated active passive and facilitated active and facilitated most of the children or the students will choose the option e active and facilitated but there are no glut receptors or the glut channels which are for the absorption of the glucose absorption of glucose primarily depends upon the sglt or the sodium glucose sodium glucose co-transporter proteins which is a form of active transport so option c is correct the absorption of glucose in the git occurs in the small intestine is stimulated by hormone glucagon occurs more rapidly than the absorption of any other sugar it's more impaired in case of diabetes mellitus none of above so remember that the digestion of glucose is not influenced by the hormones which include the glucagon and insulin does not have any effect over the absorption of glucose the absorption of the glucose occurs in the small intestine this is the correct answer which of the following is true concerning the intestinal brush powder in membrane a myelase is only found in the brush powder disaccharides or di- disaccharides cross the brush powder insulin is required for the uptake of glucose fructose requires sodium independent from monosaccharide transporter minimal carbohydrate digestion occurs here because most occur in the mouth and stomach option d is correct fructose requires does not require any sodium co-transporter because fructose is absorbed from glut 5 transport proteins gastric lipase is destroyed by its b trypsin which mineral is required for the pancreatic amylase for its optimal activity so the amylase whether it will be the salivary amylase or the pancreatic amylase it requires chloride iron for the activation while the lipase you remember that a lipase requires calcium for its activity the normal ratio of bile salts with the cholesterol in bile is option e is correct because remember that the bile salts are more than the cholesterol that's why they form or they form cholesterol or they cause a cholesterol to be soluble within the bile otherwise if the bile salts are decreased and cholesterol will be increased gallstone will be occur because cholesterol will be precipitated 
so bile salts are more which are 20 and the cholesterol is 1 20 ratio 1 while if it's asking about the critical value that is that is indicative of cholestasis or the co cholelithiasis formation of bile stone so we will choose one ratio or the th 13 ratio 1 which is a critical value for the formation of gallstone which of the following is incorrect for glycolysis it is the only pathway that occurs in the all of the same body cells it is the only source of energy in erythrocytes it provides C skeleton carbon skeleton to some non-essential amino acid to glycerol part of the fat during strenuous exercise when muscle cell lack enough oxygen for short period of the ischemia anaerobic glycolysis is the major source of energy phase 1 is the energy generation where phase 2 is the energy investment phase from all of all of these options we can clearly point out that the option E is incorrect because in phase 1 of the glycolysis ATP is utilized for the for, for the kinases such as hexokinase which causes the phosphorylation of the glucose to form glucose 6 phosphate and fructose 1 6 5 phosphate also utilized so total of 2 ATPs are used here while phase 2 is the energy generation phase Citric acid cycle is the common fi final common pathway for the oxidation of carbohydrates, lipids and proteins identify the incorrect statement. It produces most of the CO2. It is the major source of NADPH and FADH2. It is an amphibolic process. All reaction of the cycle occur in mitochondria is intermediate being used in biosynthesis of other molecules. Incorrect statement for the Krebs cycle or Citric acid cycle is that option B is correct here because if you see the beta oxidation of fatty acid beta oxidation uh, causes release of many NADH and FADH if you look, look at the palmitate or palmitic acid palmitate or beta oxidation palmitate it involves formation of 7 NADPH in a single molecule of the palmitate while a single molecule of glucose undergoing the Krebs cycle will produce does not produce that much NADH that's why it is an incorrect statement here 30 year old man has been fasting for religious reason for several days his brain has reduced its source or need for glucose by using which of the following substance as an alternative source of energy fatty acid, beta hydroxybutyrate, glycerol, beta carotene and alanine Remember that the primary substrate for the oxidation or the provision of the energy for the brain is the glucose. While the secondary, if the glucose is deficient such as in this case, which is a fasting case, the glucose, the utilization of fatty acid to form acetyl-CoA which is undergoing the, which is under, undergoing uh, ketone genesis. So leading to formation of beta hydroxybutyrate now the beta hydroxybutyrate is the secondary source of energy in the brain cells so option b is correct a breastfed infant began to vomit frequently and lose weight several days later she developed jaundice hepatomegaly and bilateral cataract what is the possible cause of these symptoms so galactosemia is the correct here because the bilateral cataract along with hepatomegaly and jaundice is the are the signs and symptoms of the galactosemia in which the galactose accumulates within the blood this is due to deficiency of galactose uh, U udp galactose ureal transferase that le lead to the galactose accumulation within blood which of the following substance cannot contribute to net gluconeogenesis in a mammalian river? Alanine, glutamate, palmitate, pyruvate or chain fatty acid. This is a very conceptual question. As, as you can see that the amino acid which can undergo or the substrate for the gluconeogenesis, alanine is a substrate, glutamate is a substrate, palmitate we don't know, pyruvate is a substrate or chain fatty acid. We have a confusion between the palmitate and the orchain fatty acid which cannot contribute to the gluconeogenesis. Now palmitate is a fatty acid and it leads to formation of acetyl-CoA. 
while the oat chain fatty acid also undergoing the uh, beta oxidation so oat chain fatty acid when undergo beta oxidation will produce propanoyl coa a and acetyl coa these are its final products so propanoyl coa is a can contribute to the gluconeogenesis because it can undergo uh, successive dehydrogenation dehydrogenation to form the succinyl coa which is a intermediate of the Krebs cycle so it can contribute to the gluconeogenesis but palmitate cannot contribute so option c is correct which of the following complications is likely, less likely to occur in type 2 diabetes as opposed to type 1 diabetics? Retinopathy, weight, low weight gain, cardiovascular disease, hypoglycemic coma, non-ketotic hyperosmolar coma. So it's asking about the condition that does not occur in the type 2 diabetes as compared to type 1 diabetes. Retinopathy is common, weight gain is also common, cardiovascular disease are also common. While non-ketotic osmolar, hypo-osmolar coma, hyper-osmolar coma is a major, con, con, or major complication, non-ketotic complication of the type 2 diabetes. Hypoglycemic coma cannot occur in, in the type 2 diabetes because type 1 diabetes is an insulin dependent diabetes. If we give dosage of insulin to a type 1 diabetes because the target cells are being working, so it leads to the hypoglycemia if excess insulin is injected but if we inject same amount of uh, insulin into the type 2 diabetes where the insulin is already there and the target cells are not responding to the insulin so there will be no hypoglycemic coma so option d is correct a positive nitrogen balance occurs in growing infants for following surgery in advanced st cancer stage in quasi core no no above Positive nitrogen is basically or positive nitrogen balance is generally the amount of uh, uh, increase in amount of nitrogen then it is excreted mean higher intake less excretion of nitrogen it is occurs in the growing infant moving to our question number 26 tryptophan occur, uh, could be considered precursor of melatonin Thyroid hormones, melanin, epinephrine, both A and D. So major products forming from the tryptophan are the serotonin and niacin. If we see the uh, metabolism of serotonin, serotonin will give rise to the melatonin. So we can say that the melatonin is a precursor of the uh, precursor of the tryptophan. Uh, tryptophan is a precursor of melatonin because it is forming from the serotonin and serotonin is forming from the tryptophan so option a is correct the main site of oxidative deamination are liver and kidney skin and pancreas intestinal and memory gland lung and spleen none above, above so liver we know that the liver is the major organ for the metabolism and kidney is the second major so liver and kidney are the both involved in the oxidative deamination moving to our question number 78 77 we have done 78 the trimine TAS a minus activity needs the coenzyme ATP pyridoxal phosphate FAD LAD both B and D transamination reaction is a uh, transfer of amino group from an amino acid to keto acid and it requires pyridoxal phosphate as a cofactor or coenzyme Transamination is the transfer of an amino acid as we have discussed it is from the amino group transfer of an amino group from an amino acid to the keto acid option B is correct in brain the major metabolism removal of ammonia is the formation of glutamine aspartate aspartine glutamine none above so ammonia is removed from in two forms from body tissues one is from the CNS or the brain and one is from the skeletal muscle and other extra hepatic tissues. So brain utilizes the glutamate causing the formation of glutamine. So glutamine is can travel into the blood and is carrying the another nitrogen or another ammonia along with its terminal and terminal ammonia. So removal of ammonia in the brain occurs through formation of glutamine while in 
skeletal muscle and extra hepatic tissue it occurs by formation of through transamination amination reaction through formation of lna so option d is correct lipogenesis occurs in which of cellular component cytosol endoplasmic reticulum golgi mitochondria ribosomes lipogenesis occurs in cytosol which of the following is an important intermediate in the biosynthesis of fatty acid acetyl coa cholesterol glucose melanoyl coa or carbamyl phosphate if you look at the fatty acid synthesis first steps involve the formation of melanoyl coa while acetyl coa is a major substrate so intermediate is the melanoyl coa long chain fatty acid are found in the dietary lipids or can be synthesized from which of the following acetyl coa glucose glycerol glycogen cholesterol as we have discussed previously the acetyl coa is a major substrate for the formation of the long chain fatty acids fatty liver is due to the build up of which of the following chylomicron hdl ldl vldl or triglycerol so tags are the major culprits in forming the in causing the fatty liver Option E is correct. Eighty-five hydrolysis of TAGs is initiated by lingual gastric, lingual pancreatic, lingual intestinal lipase, gastric pancreatic lipase, gastric intestinal lipase. So most of the students will be confused within the lingual and the pancreatic lipase as well as the gastric lipase. Now the it's causing uh, so the may. triglycerol are basically hydrolyzed by the lingual lipase which is released from the von ebner's gland in the in the mouth cavity so it causes hydrolysis of short chain fatty acids while the gastric lipase has little activity in the stomach because of the low ph as well as no soap formation or no calcium in in the g, uh, gastric juice so no emul emulsification of fats occur in the gastric uh, stomach so gastric lipase has little effect over the hydrolysis of tags but it is called it is stating that which is uh, tags is initiated by hydrolysis is initiated by so initiated from the lingual lipase as well as the gastric lipase and ended by the pancreatic lipase because little bit of the digestion is occurring from the or is causing due to the gastric lipase option a is correct gastric lipase destroyed by this is the same repeated question trypsin is destroying the gastric lipase now the git module module subject is pathology 55 year old main male was admitted to the hospital with history of blood stool weight loss and arthritis on further investigation he was diagnosed as suffering from inflammatory bowel disease which of the following Pathologic feature is the most likely seen in Crohn's disease, pseudogranulomas, non-cascading granulomas, superficial broad-based ulcers, uveitis, mural inflammation. So, Crohn, both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are the chronic inflammatory disease of the uh, GIT or uh, inflammatory bowel disease, part of inflammatory bowel disease. In Crohn's disease, there is no mural inflammation. there is a transmural inflammation which involves all the which involve ulceration or the crypt formation in all of the layers of the git sometimes perforating through all of the layers and extending into the extra or, or causing damage to the whole organ so in crohn disease there is a transmural not the mural while the non cascading granuloma is the feature of the Crohn's disease. Option B is correct. So, Helicobacter pylori is the most likely, most correct, uh, most likely characterized by spiral-shaped organism, a, a chloridia, vitamin B12 deficiency, pancreatic gastritis, or intrinsic factor deficiency. So, Helicobacter pylori is uh, involved in the atrophic gastric. atrophic gastritis which is a chronic gastritis and this is the main cause of the uh, main cause of the chronic gastritis which is inflammation of the gastric mucosa now there are two forms of the chronic gastritis one is the infectious one is the autoimmune in autoimmune there are the antibodies against the parietal cells as well as intrinsic factor so 
while in infectious there is only pen get gastritis which is involving all the layers of the uh, stomach so vitamin b12 deficiency occurs due to a deficiency of uh, intrinsic factor and it is a feature of autoimmune disease while intrinsic factor is also feature of autoimmune disease a chloridia which is uh, due to the deficiency of the hcl secretion this is caused by the auto antibodies attacking over the parietal cells so this will cause the a chloridia decrease hcl secretion this is also the features of the these are these b c and e are the features of the autoimmune or autoimmune uh, gastritis while the pen gastritis is the feature of helicobacter pylori so option b is correct d is correct 35 year old male or old male came to the physician for investigation regarding status of hepatitis b he was positive for hbs antigen 6 month back he has no signs and symptoms hepatitis b profile shows hbs antigen positive with hbe antigen negative hbs hbc antibody positive and low hbv dna most probable diagnosis of this case is window period auto immune hepatitis healthy carrier hiv associated chronic hepatitis or fatty liver so hepatitis b infection also involves the window period in window period there is there is a masking of the or we say there will be no hbs antigen will be negative or positive could be positive or negative hbc antibody will be positive while all the, all the hb core antigen as well as hb envelope antigen or hbe antigen will be negative and hbv dna will also be the negative or low this is called window period of hepatitis b infection 5 year old child was admitted in pediatric emergency with a history of intestinal obstruction pre operative barium enema study sh- showing constricted rectum and dilated sigmoid colon which are following congenital and abnormality is likely seen in this patient meckel's diverticulum intestinal fistula hirschsprung disease pyloric stenosis or intestinal atresia so barium enema is a technique which involves the swelling or the injection of the barium and visualizing of the whole of the gid or the visualization of the large intestine through x ray which basically darks or which basically basically intends or stains the large intestine white on the x ray so in congenital anomaly where the rectum is constricted while the sigmoid colon is dilated so it most commonly indicates the hirschsprung disease which is a congenital mega colon so in this condition the there are no para, uh, parasympathetic ganglia in the walls of the rectum which is basically most likely affected so most commonly affected in the congenital mega colon or hirschsprung disease is the rectum so in this case it will be the c Now, 30 year old woman complains of diarrhea fatigue and weight loss since last 6 months lab study shows no occult blood or parasites in the stool biopsy from upper duodenum was taken patient was placed on a special diet with wheat with no wheat or rye which of the following microscopic findings is likely to seen in the biopsy specimen lymphatic obstruction non cassetting granulomas or villus blunting and flattening crypt abscess or forming macrophages since previously we have discussed that this is the cause of, this is the case of celiac disease because the wheat or rye they the this is this patient was placed on special diet with no wheat or rye and wheat is a important uh, we wheat contain the gliadin gliadin is a, as we have previously discussed that in celiac disease gliadin are attacked by the immune cells t helper cells which cause inflammation of the gastric mucosa or sorry gastric not uh, intestinal mucosa most effectively a small intestine so in this case the 
histology will of the upper duodenum will will be the villus blunting and flattening this is due to the chronic inflammation that is caused by our t helper cells in response to the wheat or rye so villus blunting and the flattening is the most important feature we can visualize in the microscope 70 year old man was taken large men taking large quantity of nsaids for chronic degenerative arthritis of knee joint and now he has epigastric pain vomiting in his an episode of hematemesis a gastric biopsy is most likely show which of the following lesions epithelial dysplasia hyperplastic polyp acute gastritis adenocarcinoma h pylori infection this is most likely most likely case of the acute gastritis because insert is a major culprit or the major major cause of the acute gastritis inflammation of gastric mucosa a 50 year old man comes to the emergency department because of marked hematemesis that has continued for past 3 hours he has distended abdomen with fluid waves and in the spleen is splenic tip is pel- palpable what liver disease most likely to be the present in this patient cirrhosis cholangiocarcinoma massive hepatic necrosis fatty change or hiv infection since the signs and symptoms in the question is most important these include the distended abdomen which is cause of and with a fluid wave which is cause of ascites and the spleen is also congested that's why it is palpable so congestion of spleen with the ascites or fluid in extra fluid in the peritoneal cavity is indicative of the liver failure or liver cirrhosis achalasia achalasia is most likely characterized by normal peristalsis increased resting tone of ileus lower esophageal sphincter complete relaxation of ileus normal appearance of esophageal lumen on barium swallow decreased intraluminal pressure of the esophagus so achalasia is a condition in which there is a hyper excitation of the lower esophageal sphincter that that is caused by that is caused by damage to the myenteric plexus or absent congenital absence of the inhibiting neurons that's why the lower esophageal sphincter is mostly excited leading to achalasia so increasing resting tone of ileus is the most specific definition of achalasia in city abc so these are the text subjects we have completed up to the pathology now these are two question from the text subject community medicine in city abc sanitation is minimal and people have poor high personal hygiene which type of hepatitis complication is more common in this area a b c d or e most commonly the most common cause of the acute hepatitis in uh, poor hygiene or fe- uh, poor hygiene is the hepatitis a there is widespread incidence of diarrhea in f- disease in a rural community due to flood bo- food borne infection the best option for the preventive and control of this condition is the long term in in the long term is food sanitation health ed- education cleaning hand washing provision of safe drinking water or pro- proper sanitary disposal although the health education also comes in the category of the long term problem solving but uh, in this case this is due to the diarrhea and and the food borne infection provision of uh, safe drinking water will eliminate this case in villages now git module subject is pharmacology the drug which accumulates in parietal cells uh, canaliculi and undergoes conversion to derivatives that irre- irreversibly inhibits hydrogen potassium ATPase simetidine famotidine and antacids omeprazole and sulfasalazine sulfa- sulfa- so this is asking about the proton pump inhibitor in the stomach that leads to decrease acidic or decrease acidic secretion these are ending these are the drugs that end in the prazole 
omeprazole lensoprazole esmoprazole so option d is correct or it's going to be omeprazole 40 year old male female diagnosed with a peptic ulcer which of the following antibiotic agent is used to treat eradicate helicobacter pylori bacteria cefenamidol cefetraxone ciprofloxacin clarithromycin or clindamycin so for the treatment of the infection of the helicobacter pylori we have a three three regimen or three specific drugs one is the ppi proton pump inhibitor which include omeprazole second is the clarithromycin clarithromycin which is a an antibiotic and third is the amoxicillin amoxicillin and fourth one is the metronidazole so these are the four regimen that that is given in case of helicobacter pylori the following agent acts as a an antidiarrheal agent cimeterin metoclopramide lopramide methyl cellulose or prosilium so antidiarrheal diarrheal agent are also derivatives of or the agonist for the opioids which are similar which include lopramide which is acting on the opioid receptor in the git leading to constipation for or the blockage or the to treat diarrhea the metadine is a h2 blocker while the methyl cellulose and psyllium psyllium is the uh, diarrheals or cathartics laxative and cathartics cancer patient is re receiving chemotherapy and the adverse effect of that agent is a message which of the following agent will be used to treat chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting so ordensterone is the drug that is given for the chemotherapy patients to block the which is a also anti emetic emetics blocks emesis which is a side effect of chemotherapy in cancer patients now we are moving towards the endocrinology endocrinology module subject is anatomy first question is a histo micrograph of a parathyroid gland is visualized by the group of teacher group teacher he was interested in visualizing the cells which tend to occur in nodules have eosinophilic cytoplasm which are the following cells it would be chief cells eosinophil cells principal cells adipocytes or fibroblast so major two cells which are found in the parathyroid gland are the chief cells and the eosinophil cells but if we look at the histomitog micrograph of the parathyroid gland you can see these cells which are line or which are stained darker or which have darker nuclei are more numerous in more numerous within the parenchyma of the parathyroid but they have less eosinophilic cytoplasm they are pale pale stained they are not strongly stained and this question is asking about the they have eosinophilic cytoplasm and occurs in uh, nodules so you can see that eosinophil cells these are eosinophil cells these are larger than the uh, chief cells these are chief cells these are eosinophil cells these are less in numerous but they have strong eosinophilic cytoplasm so these are the eosinophil cells question number 2 102 in contrast mri of the young patient revealed blocking of arterial supply of posterior pressure leading to necrosis of the cells and failure of hormone output which are the following is histological hallmark of posterior pituitary herring bodies chromophils chronophil chromophobes nasal bodies or glycels herring bodies are most prominent features which will you visualize on the histology my histological micrograph of the posterior pituitary these are basically dilated ends of the uh, nerve fibers or dilated end of the nerve fiber which is carrying the harm which is secreting the hormone adh and oxytocin i stop a pathologist observing a slide of pituitary gland under microscope he is interesting in locate the cells which are acidophilic in nature which of the following cells are acidophilic in nature somatotrophs gonadotrophs thyrotrophs or gonadotrophs thyrotrophs electrotrophs and somatotrophs so the best 
mnemonic to remember the acidophils and the basophils is the acid pig acid for acidophil p for prolacto or prolactin which which include lactotrophs prolactin is uh, prolactin is released from the lactotrophs and g g for uh, gonadotro g for growth hormone which is from the somatotrophs so uh, acid pig and bas and basic fast basic for basil basil of basil basophils while fast include fast for fsh secreting cells lh secreting cells acth secreting cells and t for thyro thyrotroph thyrotrophs so these are basophils while the lactotrophs and the somatotrophs are the acidophils abnormal functioning of the pancreatic islets is a hallmark of type 2 diabetes which islets develop in third month of the fetal life which are the following is the embryological source mesoderm neural neural care cells ectoderm neuroectoderm parenchyma no islets are developing uh, islets are the islets of langerhans are the part of the pancreas pancreas develop from the endoderm through the uh, ventral and pancreatic pen, uh, um, ventral and pancreatic bud from foregut so this is the endoderm since there is no endoderm but the cells of the islets of pancreas are developed from parenchyma so parenchyma of the pancreas give rise to the islets of langerhans so these are group of cells that severe their connection with the ducts so there will be no ducts between these cells islets that's why these are also called islands patient is suffering from the hypercalcemia after subtotal thyroidectomy due to loss of inferior parathyroid gland what is the embryological source of inferior parathyroid gland first first pouch second pharyngeal pouch third pharyngeal pouch fourth pouch second and third pharyngeal pouch so inferior parathyroid glands are developed uh, developed from the third pharyngeal pouch along with thymus while the superior thyroid parathyroid gland are de or develops from the fourth pouch a 28 year old female visited her physician with a complaint of headache and disturbance of vision after investigation which reveal altered level of anterior pituitary hormones and connective tissue ct scan has shows skin shows enlargement of the pituitary pituitary gland which are the following separately compressed superiorly dorsum ciliae optic chasm sphenoid air sinus cavernous sinus or basilar artery so the most common complication or the most common sinus symptoms of the pituitary adenoma is bilateral or bitemporal hemianopia which is a defect in the loss of vision in the temporal temporal fields or temporal visual fields on both side of the this is due to the compression of optic chiasm optic chiasm is uh, may, uh, is formed by the uh, fibers from both the optic nerve which basically cross over and these these are inferior and the optic chiasm is located superior to the pituitary gland if you look at the section of the brain we can see or section of the hypodiencephalon you can see that the pituitary gland is uh, inferior to the optic chiasm when the pituitary gland will be enlarged it will cause the pressure symptoms as well as bilateral hemi temp by temporal hemianopia which is due to the compression of optic chiasm a young female came to the surgery clinic with the complaint of swelling in front of the neck just below the adam's apple advice for thyroid effect thyroidectomy which of the following vessel is closely associated with the recurrent laryngeal nerve superior thyroid inferior thyroid thyro thyroid edema or th inferior thyroid jugular vein internal jugular vein external carotid artery so inferior thyroid artery is associated with the recurrent laryngeal nerve while superior thyroid artery is associated with the external laryngeal nerve if the if it any damage to the recurrent laryngeal art nerve occurs there will be hoarseness of voice option b is correct while performing the thyroid surgery it is necessary to remove both true and false capsule 
टू कैप्सूल इज अ पार्ट ऑफ विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्ट्रक्चर प्रिटेक्टल फेशिया प्रिटेक्टल फेशिया और थायरॉइड कनेक्टेड फेशियो कैरोटेड चीत डीप सर्वाइकल फेशिया पेराट्रेकल फेशिया सो इफ यू लुक एट द एनाटमी ऑफ द थायरॉइड ग्लैंड इट इज सराउंडेड बाय द फॉल्स कैप्सूल एज वेल एज ट्रू कैप्सूल ट्रू कैप्सूल इज फॉर्म फ्रॉम द थायरॉइड कनेक्टिव टिश्यू वाइल द फॉल्स कैप्सूल इज बेसिकली द कवरिंग ऑफ द प्रिटेक्टल फेशिया प्रिट्रेकल फेशिया In this case, option B will be correct. A 45-year-old patient with a severe headache and con- uncontrolled hypotension was brought to the emergency with a palpitation. After MRI diagnosis of tumor in left adrenal gland was made, on laparotomy, t- tumor was found adhering to the structure lying laterally to it. Which of the following structures lying laterally? The option will be the uh, spleen because due to splenic compression there will be hypertension because spleen is a major uh, also contain the blood blood reservoir and contain much of the blood of the systemic circulation which is drained into the splenic artery or which is basically drained into hep- splenic vein and supplied by the splenic artery from the celiac trunk if the spleen is compressed it will cause the hypertension as well as the if we look at the section or the look at the anatomy this is the left suprarenal gland this is this is the kidney you look at the that the splenic artery runs on the superior border of the pancreas while these are anterior to anterior inferior to the suprarenal gland so this cannot these cannot be compressed while if you look at the spleen spleen is located laterally to the left renal suprarenal gland so it is asking about the lateral relation so in the tumor of the uh, suprarenal gland or the left suprarenal gland spleen will be compressed in class surface anatomy of the pancreas uh, pancreas teacher is asking the part of pancreas lying on the transpyloric plane head ancillary process neck body tail so transpyloric plane is a plane at the lower border of l1 vertebra so in, in that plane body of the pancreas is mostly situated which is, as you can see here body of the pancreas along with uh, pylorus of the stomach and first part of the duodenum and hilum of the both kidneys are lie or lie at the same level which are which is also called transpyloric plane 40 year old female visited her physician for complaints of muscle cramps and burn, burning sensation in hands and feet her serum calcium was found lower in lab, lab, uh, laboratory investigation she had history of removal of parathyroid gland what is the location of superior parathyroid gland superior border of cricoid cartilage inferior border of cricoid cartilage superior border of thyroid cartilage inferior border of thyroid cartilage below the hyoid bone hyoid bone so location of the superior parathyroid gland is the inf- is located inferior to the cricoid cartilage inferior border of cricoid cartilage the anterior pituitary adrenal hypophysis develops as an ectodermal outpocketing of the stomodium which which lies immediately behind the oropharyngeal membrane on the lateral wall of the oropharyngeal membrane on the lateral wall of the primitive oral cavity on the floor of the primitive oral cavity on the developing tongue so if you look at the development of the pituitary as anterior pituitary as well as posterior pituitary anterior pituitary is also called adenohypophysis because it leads to it synthesizes hormones and release into the blood circulation while the posterior pituitary is also called neurohypophysis which is this is why it it is outpocketing of the diencephalon or part of the hypothalamus or uh, or we say part of the diencephalon that uh, protrudes inferiorly that's why it is called neurohypophysis and it does not synthesize any hormones hormones are synthesized synthesize in the hypothalamus which are transported into the posterior pituitary so it's asking about the rathke's pouch so rathke's pouch is is involved in development of the anterior pituitary which and it is outpocketing of the stomodium which is a primitive oral cavity stomodium is also called primitive oral cavity so 
it lies immediately behind the oropharyngeal membrane if you look at the section of the developing embryo this is the red kiss pouch this is you can see the this is whole is cavity is called primitive oral cavity or primitive oral cavity or stomodium this is lined by the oropharyngeal or buccopharyngeal membrane and this is the uh, foregut now the red kiss pouch is developing from the it developing posterior to the oropharyngeal membrane you can see this is the diverticulum of the primitive oral cavity red kiss pouch and this is the buccopharyngeal membrane the parafollicular cells of thyroid gland are derived from pharyngeal arches pharyngeal pouches ultima branchial body thyroid glossal duct epithelial proliferation the floor of the pharynx so parafollicular parafollicular cells or c cell clear cells of the thyroid gland are derived from ultimo branchial bodies ultimo branchial bodies are mixed uh, contain mix of uh, neural care cells as well as first uh, fifth pharyngeal pouch fifth fifth pharyngeal pouch regresses but it also gives rise to the ultimo branchial body option c is correct A mother brought her child to the doctor with a complaint of swelling in the front of the neck. On the examination, it was cystic swelling between hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage. The swelling moved upward on protrusion of the tongue. Which is, which one is true regarding the swelling? It is swelling of the body of hyoid. It's swelling of the thyroid cartilage. It may be aberrant thyroid tissue. It is thyroglossal cyst. It is a goiter. So any cystic swelling in front of the neck. which is also moving due to the movement of or movement of the during swallowing also moving up and down due to the pretracheal fascia is a thyroglossal cyst thyroglossal cyst arises as the thyroglossal duct does not regresses and it accumulates the mucus or the fluid accumulate between the aberrant part of the thyroglossal duct which leads to cyst formation so now moving to the physiology section tumor in the adrenal zona glomerula can cause hypersecretion of which of the following hormone oh, of hormones produced in that region which of the following might you expect in the find to find in the patient with such tumor increased blood sodium level increased blood glucose decreased blood calcium increased dehydration increased ketoacidosis so we need to look at the section of the adrenal cortex the zona glomerulosa so zona glomerulosa is involved in formation of synthesis of mineral corticoid which is a uh, which is aldo aldosterone oh. aldosterone is synthesized in the zona glomerulosa now we will see what are the functions of the adrenal or uh, aldo adrenalism oh, sorry aldosterone so aldosterone causes syn- reabsorption of the sodium from the kidneys while excretion of the potassium as well as uh, excretion of the hydrogen ions so excretion of hydrogen uh, potassium ion can lead to hypokalemia while reabsorption of sodium ions will lead to hyper hypernatremia and loss of hydrogen ion will lead to alkalosis so in this case option a is correct which says that increase blood sodium level because increase secretion of a, increase secretion of aldosterone will lead to increase reabsorption of sodium levels or sodium ions now a decrease in the blood plasma ionized blood ionized calcium together with an increase in pth is most likely to be found in patient with hypoparathyroidism primary hyperparathyroidism vitamin d deficiency vitamin d excess calcitonin deficiency so now we look we need to look at the hyperparathyroidism hyperparathyroidism has three types primary hyperparathyroidism secondary and tertiary in primary the pth is being secreted independent of the calcium calcium level in the blood means that the calcium level will be high and the phosphate 
since the PTH is causing the phosphate urea means excretion of the phosphate in the urine so phosphate level will be low in primary secretion one in secondary secretion or secondary para, hyperparathyroidism what happens there is a kidney failure it is it it basically associated with the kidney failure as well as vitamin D deficiency so in this case the phosphate will not be excreted into the urine and the PTH level will be normal or below normal while there will be the sorry PTH will be high because the decrease in phosphate excretion causes phosphate to bind with the calcium decreasing the calcium level as well as there when there is a deficiency of vitamin D so vitamin D deficiency causes decreased calcium absorption from GIT so in this case calcium will be low in secondary hyperparathyroidism calcium will be low and phosphate will be high and there will be vitamin D deficiency that's in low calcium PTH will be increased so that's why high PTH leading to secondary hyperparathyroidism while in tertiary hyperparathyroidism there is a the patient of primary hyperparathyroidism develops oh sorry patient of uh, tertiary hyperparathyroidism when treated with the when treated with the chronic renal failure develops primary hyperparathyroidism so option C is correct in this case where we can see that a decrease in plasma ionized calcium together with increase in PTH because in the secondary we have seen that the calcium is low an exaggerated TSH response to TRH administration is most likely found in the person who has TSI thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins pituitary insufficiency primary hypothyroidism secondary hypothyroidism elevated plasma thyroid, thyroxine T4 so when we give TRH to a uh, to a person, the TRH thyrotropin releasing hormone causes thyrotrophs in the anterior pituitary to synthesize TSH. So this is uh, basically due to defect in the hypothalamus, which is not releasing the TRH in this case. So that's why the secondary hyper hypothyroidism will occur. The hormone secreted by some endocrine gland that act on other target endocrine glands lead to stimulate their hormone secretion are called. So these are this is a simple question. It involves the tropic hormones. These are called tropic hormones. 35-year-old woman has the posterior lobe of her pituitary gland surgically removed because of the tumor. Which of the following hormone replacement therapy will uh, without hormone replacement therapy? which of the following would occur after the operation inability to concentrate the urine in response to water deprivation failure to secrete parathyroid hormone failure to uh, response to hypocalcemia failure to secrete catecholamines in response to stress failure to secrete insulin in glucose tolerance test absence of menses so since the anterior pituitary is removed it also leads to decrease in the secretion of GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone. So loss of gonadotropin releasing hormone will lead to the amenorrhea. We call it secondary amenorrhea. So absence of menses is a characteristic feature. While the ADH is released from the posterior pituitary, it will be normal. Parathyroid does not have any uh, effect or any a 35 year old man has nephrogenic diabetes insipidus which of the following would be expected in this patient decreased plasma sodium concentration decreased plasma osmolarity increased secretion of ADH high urine osmolarity low urine output so diabetes insipidus is uh, due to the defect or the decrease in the secretion or effect of a ad, uh, antidiuretic hormone ADH so since the person is nephrogenic diabetic in diabetes insipidus that's why the nephro in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus ADH is released from the posterior pituitary ADH is sufficient but kidneys do not respond to the ADH so that's why there will be 
high urine output low urine osmolarity high blood osmolarity so this in this case there will be as we can see in the options option c is going to be correct because in nephrogenic diabetes uh, insipidus adh will be increased but in nef in central diabetes insipidus there will be complete absence of the adh which is not releasing from the hypothalamus option c is correct The parathyroid glands of the patient are accidentally removed during thyroid surgery. What would you expect to occur in patient during post-operative period? Increased urinary phosphate excretion, decreased urinary calcium excretion, decreased sodium serum phosphate, increased serum calcium or tetany. So this is the case of post-operative hypoparathyroidism. Since the PTH is not there, there will be low low serum calcium. and high serum phosphate low serum phosphate or uh, low serum calcium will lead to tetany so in this case e is correct which is a spasmodic contraction of the muscle due to decrease in the resting membrane potential caused by calcium deficiency a patient present with herself at the clinic with the complaint of gross swelling of legs and puffiness of eye she had said look on her face looked very tired and says that she sleeps all day from which of the following disease she is most probably suffering from addison's disease acromegaly cushing syndrome myxedema or cone syndrome so on the symptoms or in the on the symptoms and the signs we can see that the she had sad look on her face with tiredness tiredness is a important symptom says she sleeps all day so this is and also there is a edema due to puffiness and uh, causing legs edema in the legs and puffiness of the face this is a case of hypopara hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism is also associated with the edema and is combined called the myxedema option d is correct patient reveals abnormally raised serum thyroid is TSH with concomitant rise in free thyroxine and fall in thyroid TRH. The patient has most likely developed Graves' disease, thyroiditis, primary hypothyroidism, hypothalamus failure, TSH secreting tumor. Since we can see that the abnormally raised TSH means this is releasing from the pituitary gland. TSH is being released from pituitary gland while there is a fall in the thyrotropic releasing hormone. due to the negative feedback of the tsh high tsh inhibits the trh release from the hypothalamus it means that the hypothalamus is normal while tsh release from the anterior pituitary so there is a pituitary adenoma that is causing the increased secretion of tsh that lead to the high level of th- thyroxine and t- t3 and t4 so this is a case in tsh secreting tumor or we say secondary hyper hype secondary hyperthyroidism the patient with a hyperthyroidism exhibit tachycardia this is mainly due to sensitization of heart tissue to insulin glucagon cortisol growth hormone or adrenaline so thyroid hormone also works with the sympathetic nervous system to increase the heart contractility and blood pressure so adrenaline is uh, also due to the also leading to the tachycardia grand biological clock of the body is so grand biological clock which is involved in the sleep and wake cycle as well as circadian rhythm is a suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus feature that are responsible for acromegaly in hyper secretion of growth hormone in adults are large hands and feet in large viscera in large nose nerve entrapment syndrome or hyperglycemia okay in this question we can see that there are certain option which are similar in uh, which are also features of the acromegaly which is uh, basically a hyper secretion of uh, growth hormone in adults while the gigantism is uh, hyper secretion of growth hormone in children in adults the no height will be normal in acromegaly height of the person will be normal 
while there will be enlarged viscera as well as large hands and feet will be enlarged as well as forehead slanting forehead enlarged nose will be there but the dif- it is asking about the differentiating features that is basically specific to the acromegaly this is a nerve entrapment syndrome due to the enlargement in the uh, viscera as well as the muscles and the hands and feet there will be symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome which is a entrapment which is a nerve entrapment in the hand which of the following is not inhibited by cortisol for its anti-inflammatory effects IL1 IL2 nuclear factor B lipoprotein lipase phospholipase C so if we have if we look at the functions of the cortisol in anti-inflammatory uh, effects we will see that the, it inhibits the release of IL1 IL2 as well as nuclear factor beta which is involved in forming or proliferation of macrophages as well as lipoprotein lipoprotein C is also inhibited by the cortisol but lipoprotein lipase is not inhibited by the cortisol because cortisol basically increases the hydrolysis of the triacylglycerol for the energy purposes that's why it utilizes lipoprotein lipase to basically increase uh, it stimulates lipoprotein lipase but does not inhibit so now moving toward the biochemistry subject which of the following hormones may lead to hypoglycemia epinephrine norepinephrine growth hormone insulin or cortisol we look at the epinephrine norepinephrine growth hormone and cortisol are all involved in the hypo hyperglycemia causing hyperglycemia increase glucose in the blood while insulin has a hypoglycemia effect insulin is correct dietary deficiency of iodine would cause which of the following effects increase secretion of thyroglobulin increase synthesis of t3 t4 increase secretion of tsh increase metabolic rate increase heart rate and blood pressure so in iodine deficiency which can cause the primary hypothyroidism in in this case the tsh will be high due to the negative feedback thyroid is not being releasing from the thyroid glands that's why tsh is hyper secreting from the anterior pituitary leading to certain symptoms which of the following hormones acts through the second messenger trial t3 th- t4 aldosterone growth hormone or cortisol so all of the f- following hormones has intracellular receptors while growth hormone is a protein and it has extracellular receptor so it utilizes secondary or second messenger hormone acting through cgmp cyclic gmp insulin glucagon follicle fsh lh or anp so anp utilizes cyclic gmp as well as nitric oxide also utilizes the cyclic gmp as a second messenger in case secretion of water from kidneys is a major effect of which of the following hormone this is basically a little uh, incorrect question because cortisol has been written two times and they should be increased absorption of water which is a function of antidiuretic hormone so which of the following is not a true for corticosteroids cholesterol is primary precursor for synthesis of all first step occurs in the mitochondria second step occurs in endoplasmic reticulum 21 beta hydroxylase is the rate limiting enzyme aldosterone is the chief mineral corticoid hormone if you look at the synthesis of the corticosteroids cholesterol is a major precursor for synthesis of all steroid hormones first step always occurs in the mitochondria second second of the step occur in endoplasmic reticulum while the option d and aldosterone is a chief mineral corticoid of the human body so 21 beta hydroxylase is not a rat limiting enzyme in the synthesis of steroid hormones cholesterol desmolase which is a first step in which cholesterol is converted into pregnenolone which is an immediate precursor or intermediate precursor so cholesterol desmolase is a rat limiting enzyme so option d is correct here now moving to our pathology 
A 40-year-old female complains of swelling in front of the neck. Clinical examination revealed tachycardia, palpitation, protrusion of eyeball. Laboratory tests reveal increased T3-T4, which, are the, which is the likely diagnosis. Graves disease, toxic adenoma, toxic nodular goiter, multinodular goiter, iodine-induced hyperthyroidism, Hirschfeld motor thyroiditis. So the, this is a case of hyperthyroidism, and there is also protrusion of eyeball, which is also called the uh, exophthalmos. And it is a characteristic of the grave disease. 30 years male came to the clinician with complaint of getting long arms and weight. Height is about 8 feet. Which of the following hormone is responsible? This is a case of gigantism. And this is uh, uh, occurred due to the hypertrichation of growth hormone. 65 year old male came to the Clinician with a complaint of cough with sputum and blood weight loss. Histopathologist examination reveals small cell lung carcinoma, which of the following syndrome is produced by this tumor. Pituitary Cushing syndrome, adrenal Cushing syndrome, iatrogenic Cushing syndrome, Kohn syndrome, ectopic Cushing syndrome. So this, there are small cell lung carcinoma of lung in the bronchi, which are primary source for the ACTH secretion that leads to the hyper secretion of the cortisol from adrenal cortex. This is also called the ectopic Cushing syndrome. So option E is correct because the site is ectopic as it is not releasing from the pituitary. If it is releasing from the pituitary as in pituitary adenoma, it is also it is called Cushing disease, not the Cushing syndrome. Which of the following laboratory test results reveals primary hyperthyroidism? Increased T3, T4. Yes, this is correct. Decreased T3, no. Decrease T3, T4, no. Increase T4 and decrease T3, no. Decrease T3, T4, T4, T3, no. Option A is correct. Which of the following is autoimmune disease of thyroid? thyroid subacute lymphocytic thyroiditis, granulomatous thyroiditis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, radial thyroiditis, or multinodular goiter? So if we look at the subacute, it is caused by viral attacks, while granulomatous thyroiditis is a feature of subacute hyperthyroid. Uh, Lymphatic thyroiditis, Hashimoto thyroiditis is also termed as the autoimmune disease of thyroid, in which there are antithyroid peroxidase and antithyroid globulin antibodies are secreted by the beta cells or B cells. Moving to the pharmacology, which of the following is agent is used to treat hypothyroidism? Thiomides, iodide salts, radioactive iodine, anion inhibitors, levothyroxine. So levothyroxine is basically given to the patient with of, of hypothyroidism. Levothyroxine is analog to the T4 and it acts like just like T4. Which of the following is the main which of the following is the short acting insulin? Insulin respro as part in regular insulin. Neutral protamine hydrodol new insulin or insulin glargin. So, if you look at the classes of the insulin, insulin starts from the rapid acting, then short acting, then uh, intermediate acting, then long acting, and ultra long acting. In the short acting, uh, in the rapid acting, there are there lie the three classes or uh, three types of insulin. These are insulin respro, aspart, and glulizine. While in short uh, insulin. In short insulin, there is a regular insulin, which is basically analog to the human insulin released by beta cells. While uh, intermediate acting insulin is and also called neutral protamine hagidor NPH, and long acting insulin is called uh, uh, glargine or detemir, and the ultra long acting insulin is called uh, de uh, deglutac. In this case, it is asking about the short acting, so regular insulin will be the correct answer. Anti-diabetic drug belong to the biguanide group is. So biguanide group is also called the uh, insulin secreta insulin non secret is class from the insulin non secreta gox, which increase the insensitivity of uh, extra hepatic tissues towards or or hepatic tissues towards the insulin so it, it is a basically drug of choice in diabetic type 2 so it include metformin d which of the following is the short acting glucocorticoid 
प्रेडनीसोन फ्लूटिकासोन हाइड्रोकोटिसोन डेक्सोमेथासोन डेक्सोमेथासोन हाइड्रोकोटिसोन इज अ शॉर्ट एक्टिंग ग्लूकोकोटिकॉइड विच इज मोस्टली अप्लाइड इन द टॉपिकल फॉर्म सो दीज आर द लास्ट क्वेश्चन वन फिफ्टी नाइन टू वन फिफ्टी दीज आर फ्रॉम द टेक्स सब्जेक्ट एनी न्यूज दैट ड्रास्टिकली अल्टर्स पेशेंट व्यू ऑफ हिज और हर फ्यूचर इज दिस इज द बैड न्यूज विच आर द वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द बेस्ट डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस दिस इज फ्रॉम द बाय मेडिकल साइंसिस और बिहेवियरल साइंसिस एंड द ऑप्शन डी इज करेक्ट डू विच इज अफेक्टिव ड्यूरिंग टाइम्स ऑफ स्ट्रेस सो वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड अवर जी आई टी एज वेल एज एंडोक्रोलॉजी मॉड्यूल टेस्ट विच इज फ्रॉम लम्स नाउ दिस वॉज द एंड If you like this video share with your friends which are also studying in the second year of the MBBS we also subscribe to our YouTube channel we are also successfully running our Facebook page as well as website and we have also module test from the first year you can uh, see in the playlist if you have any query regarding this you can email us at or con- contact us at lumsonline2021@gmail.com Thank you for watching. We'll see you in next video.